Hi guys. Surprise, I'm live again. <laughs> oh man. Um, my little girl who's three months old now uh, got like sick for the first time. Um, so I was up two nights ago, up almost all night, just holding her and rocking her and helping her go to sleep. Um, but she's pretty much gotten over whatever it was, just a little congestion. Uh, and now I have a sore throat, so that's great. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I just wanted to hop on and, and share some tips for you guys on this topic um, anyways, and um, say hi. And if you're watching, say hi in the comments. I love seeing who's here. If you're watching the replay, um, put hashtag replay in the comments and let me know that you watched it and what you enjoyed about this live. Um, this is a topic that a lot of dog trainers or new dog trainers come across um, needing answers to, and there's not like one right answer um, because it's, uh, it's a matter of dealing with people <laughs> and people that uh, love working with animals. Um, so they're often not always super people people. Um, and, you know, I've found some workarounds on to like, you know, how to get a mentor. So I wanted to share them with you, uh, you know, back when I was starting out back in the day. <laughs> and actually, um, some of you may know me from a while back, but a lot of you probably don't, but I'm actually a crossover trainer. So um, I started out uh, following methods like um, Caesar Milan and the Dog Whisperer and that kind of stuff. And um, I transitioned over to positive reinforcement based dog training. So, um, and like science based dog training. <laughs> Thanks to my own dog who, uh, you know, after working with hundreds of dogs, he was the one that, uh, you know, it didn't work with. So I had to switch my methods. Um, anyways, uh, so I had to find a mentor and learn from other people um, in person because I had no experience with that kind of training before. And so I want to share some tips on how I did that, um, how you can do that, and um, hopefully it helps you out as you're getting started or transitioning yourself. Um, so hopefully these tips help you. And if you're here, say hi in the comments. Sometimes they don't show up till a few minutes in. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> awesome. So how to find a mentor as a new dog trainer, or I guess, you know, a dog trainer that's learning new methods. Um, my first recommendation is to take a couple of classes with your own dog. Um, so likely uh, you have a dog. <laughs> uh, and uh, there are things that you can do with your dog, like take classes with another trainer in the area. Um, the thing is with this, if you know you want to be a dog trainer, you really should be upfront with them uh, and be like, hey, you know, I'm looking to become a dog trainer myself. I would love to just take one of your classes just to get to know more about what that looks like. Um, you know, a lot of people give, you know, spend time uh, in industries before they get into them, right? To learn more about them and what that looks like in real life. So um, just be out front um, and, you know, give that client or uh, dog trainer a heads up. Um, let them know that you're looking to potentially be a dog trainer and you want to get a better feel for what that looks like and, um, you know, take a class with them. Uh, if they don't want you in their class, that's okay. <laughs> because it means um, that that's not somebody you want to spend your time with anyways, right? Um, honestly, like, I would not want to learn from somebody who is so worried about having competition um, that they don't let somebody come in and just get that experience. Um, you know, just basic class learning experience. And um, honestly, like, there is competition, but there are so many dogs. There are so many dogs out there <laughs> that need help. Um, so many owners that have the ability to, to get help. And um, the way you help somebody is not going to be the same way that uh, somebody else helps somebody. So there's so much um, competition. There's so many clients. Um, but everybody's going to serve those people differently. And you're just going to get along with different people. Um, so there's not, um, you know, if somebody feels threatened by that, then uh, it's probably not somebody that you want to necessarily spend your time with. Um, so don't be worried. Uh, just be upfront with the trainer and let them know that's something you're exploring and you want to learn more about what that looks like. So another way to get um, a mentor is uh, to attend local seminars um, and network. So um, usually at the end of events, uh, you know, you'll have the seminar 
uh, maybe you'll participate in like a workshop or something, but usually trainers go out for drinks afterwards <laughs> and talk about their experiences and talk about what they learned and talk about how they're going to apply that material um, in real life to uh, their clients. And that's just, I'm just, that is priceless. Um, and I'm tearing up because I've had such amazing experiences. Um, doing this and going out with trainers and learning from their experiences um, as, as human beings, as trainers, as professionals. Um, you know, you hear some amazing stories, you hear some really sad stories, um, but it's one of the greatest ways to get to know what that looks like as a trainer. It helps you get to know uh, things that you can maybe be coming your way in the future. Um, so like, uh, you know, situations that you may experience with clients. Um, situations you may experience with dogs uh, so that you can be better prepared for those. So um, that's really one of the best ways to find a mentor is just get to know those people in your area that go to seminars and are looking to improve their skill set. Um, and you know, just come to observe, just be friendly. Um, <laughs> uh, make sure to listen, don't talk too much. Um, and uh, you know, the, the pros out there are open and, and willing to share their experiences um, with others uh, like them in the community. Um, so that's that's a great way to get to know people um, and find a mentor that's willing to let you come out to their classes or even shadow you to private lessons. Um, that's one of the ways I, I went about that. Um, another way you can do is just, you know, direct message local trainers um, that you're interested in learning from and ask to shadow them uh, assist them in some way, volunteer your assistance. You know, if somebody works with a lot of reactivity clients, uh, they may need somebody to hold uh, the little demo dog right and down the street. <laughs> um, they may need somebody to uh, walk a stuffed animal down the street. Uh, here's a fun fact, I've had my husband do that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. Um, we had a good time, we got some good weird looks from neighbors. Um, but it was it was a great uh, experience. And so they may need help. Um, they may not be able to afford uh, to pay somebody to do that work. Um, so if you're you know friendly and you approach them with like, I'd like to help you um, just get to know more about the industry and what uh, it looks like to be a dog trainer, um, they're often willing to accept that free help <laughs> with somebody that's reliable and professional, of course. Um, so that's one way to go about it. And then uh, my last tip is uh, to take an online class, which you know a lot of dog trainers want to le learn in person, um, but there's a really great platform out there that I've not seen anybody else be able to replicate, and that is on um, the Fenzy Dog Sport Academy. And I've taken several classes through them as well. But um, what you can do is participate in a course um, fully, like you can actually, there's three different levels, um, and I recommend um, going all in and going for the, the highest level so that you can participate. Um, you film videos of yourself training your dog, you submit those videos, and then you get critiques. And um, it's a really, really great experience, but the bonus is that you get access to a Facebook group uh, for the alumni, and in there, you can find lots of people that um, are going through similar situations with their dogs um, and lots of other trainers. I know a lot of professional dog trainers that have taken courses in that um, program and um, have uh, lots, of, lots of info to share in there. And um, maybe you can even find somebody that's local to you that's taken one of those classes before. Um, and that's kind of one way to really connect with them as like human beings, like a, a mutual experience um, and you could invite them out to coffee to talk about it um, maybe share you know your experience with the class uh, share what you learned um, and that kind of thing and help <laughs> uh, help you know just help you connect in person right so those are some tips <laughs> I think uh, it's a really good place to start um, often this kind of stuff you know it's intimidating it's scary to meet new people um, a lot of dog trainers out there put up like a facade of, of like being like super professional and like um, not mean, but uh, intimidating. <laughs> and you know, I don't know why, but 
a lot of times uh, they're just humans and um, they're willing to help newbies come up and uh, learn uh, from the good people in their community. And, um, you know, they probably want to help influence the new trainers in their community as well, right? Like if um, they have an ability to make a positive impact in the community by helping another trainer learn uh, the techniques that they need to learn to be a good trainer, then that's a win-win. Um, so hopefully you got some help out of those tips. Uh, share in the comments if um, you can think of a different way to get a mentor, uh, a way that you've been able to do it. And um, I will see you guys later. I'm off to dinner with the family. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. Bye.